All right. Thank you so much for joining me, Sam. Mr. Samuel. Um, all right. So there's going to be a couple of people watching this, hopefully more than a couple. Uh, let's, let's tell those that, who are watching this a little bit about yourself. So tell us uh, what, do you, what do you do for work or what do you do with your, your time and what is something else that you do with your uh, time outside of work that brings you joy or some yep. things that you're working on projects? Well, firstly, g'day all. Uh, so yeah, like you said, Sam, I am an aviation firefighter. So I work in WA, but live in uh, South Australia. I have recently just moved into a van uh, with the missus by choice. We're not homeless. Uh, we decked it out and plan on doing some traveling. So exciting times ahead with that. Um, I enjoy golf. I recently got my A license in skydiving so I can jump out of a plane on my own voluntarily. I don't know why I do it. It's the rush. It's fun, but uh and yeah with obviously yourself i commenced my property journey after having done it solo for a little bit and you helped me uh you know i guess accelerate that a little bit and just get some clarity and confidence with investing yeah awesome let's talk a little bit about that because you had how many properties you did already had two investments before you came my way yeah so i had i think when i was about 23 i bought my first in my hometown um i had a bit of money saved there and it was the adulty thing to do is to buy a house and the intention was to move into it. Um, but then my, my partner at the time had a rental through her work. So we just stayed there and probably wasn't the smartest move. It was in a bit, bit of a volatile area. Hindsight's a beautiful thing. I think I bought in the peak, um, but that's been good to me. It's just paid itself off. And then number two, I bought in Adelaide, which is um, where I'm currently living and have been for, you know, last however many years and I bought just before COVID um, which was turns out to be a blessing but I think I got the keys the same month that they announced it as a pandemic um, mm -hmm. so I was a little bit worried for a while there but then obviously with what happened with the market um, yeah I was in a position to to go ahead with the third and I didn't want to leave anything to chance um, so I went I got in touch with yourself through a friend and um, yeah, we got the third one on the board in May this year. So a couple months ago, and we're actually looking at a, at a fourth in the sort of back half of this year. I'm so excited. You've gone from like, okay, you did one. It was average. Number mm. two, fucking did all right. Number three, yeah. you're like a bit nervous. Let's talk about that actually. Why? Yeah. Why was it that you needed a coach for your third one? What was it that you were needing from me? Um, I think it was just confidence in what I was doing. Like I knew that I was in a position to buy, but I didn't want to leave it to chance. Like the first one, for example, probably wasn't the smartest move because I bought in what I look back on was a peak. So I paid more than it was probably worth because, you know, they're in demand. And then the second one was down to luck. Like I just got fortunate with, the the market and what it did I mean, post COVID, um, I got in at a good time. Like I did a little bit of research, but like I didn't know whether what I was doing was right or not. And then when I I realised I was in a position to go again with the third, I thought, well, why leave it down to chance when you can, you know, get the people in your corner to do the heavy lifting, do all the research, do all the stuff that takes away that uncertainty, um, mm. and you move forward with all your, your eyes, eyes dotted, T's crossed. Yeah, that sounds right. Yep. Had to think about that before I said that then. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. I love that you recognise that though as well. That's something that also holds a lot of people back. So like, oh, well, maybe it was too much of a good, it was just luck or maybe, maybe that luck I can't repeat again. But for you, you're like, right, how do I make sure that I can lock that in? And by the way, that first property, even though it might not have performed as well as what it did, there's so many le lessons that were so powerful in there for you as well. Yeah. It's like you had yeah. these really powerful lessons that were very different. One didn't turn out well and one just happened and the second one just did really, really well out of complete Yeah, chance. like polar opposites almost. Yeah. And so cool that built a bit of a story behind it for you to be like, right, I need to find the right team for me. You called that in, so well done. Incredible. Yeah, and it was, I guess, in height, like looking back on it, the first property was good to just be in the market, like the equity that I'd built in that first property by 
paying it off and also the rent paying it off put me in a position to buy the second. So I guess in regards to performance, it probably hasn't performed like you would expect um, mm -hmm. a property to. I've, I think I've almost had it 10 years now. Um, but it opened doors. I was in the market and then it helped me get two and then also helped me get three. So Leverage, yep. Yeah. Perform well in some oh, areas. But now we go faster and now we're you're yeah. able to look at that. You've gotten three and what, within a couple of months of set, how long has it been since you settled on property number three? Uh, two months. I think it was two May. months that the team sourced you one and we're, and you're already starting to plan number four. Yeah. Well, we got a good, um, a good, uh, what's the word valuation on one of them that came back higher than we thought. And um, yeah, the intent was to go again, probably about this time next year, but I can go again now. So I figured, well, why delay? Hell yeah. Why delay? Exactly. Bye, 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 bye. I love it. You're going to fast track your wealth very, very, very quickly. Okay. Yeah, so it. let's talk. Uh, for those who are watching who don't understand, maybe they're like, oh, what the hell does Olivia do? Um, what were one or two things that you took away from me working with me that you'll take away for the rest of your journey? I think that you just... If I ever had questions or doubts or concerns, you were my go-to for either being like, no, don't worry about it. It's all good. We've got this covered. Or, okay, well, this is why this is happening. It was just clarity. And in an area that I think a lot of people, including myself, get mm -hmm. concerned and maybe to the point where that concern holds them back from moving forward, you're a godsend because – those questions that I had, if you didn't have the answer, you'd find it for me or you'd put me in touch with someone who did. And for me, with such a, a big investment, like taking out a loan for a property is no small thing. So I like to have my ducks lined up in a row before I say yes to things. So for you to be able to answer those questions and give me peace of mind and clarity around things that maybe I was a little unsure about was, yeah, priceless. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. It was absolutely incredible working with you, mate. Um, yeah, it was good. I enjoyed and it. I ended up bumping into you in Bali as yeah, well. That was so random. I said that to Laura when we were there. I was like, that's Liv. And it was just completely random. So weird. How did we met you? met in person at that point. We just no, hung out. Our opposite names. ends of Australia. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Okay, cool. So before we wrap this one up then, um, I want you to think of somebody else that was in your shoes let's just say they've got two properties and hasn't really gone too well, but they're in the position to um, go ahead like financially, but maybe they've just got a bit of fear or uncertainty holding them back. What's one piece of advice that you would give somebody else that's in your current shoes? Reach out. Like, unless for me, it was just asking the questions, like the questions that maybe I had uncertainty or a lack of clarity around I was fortunate that I had you to ask those questions because we'd been working together a bit and I had a friend who got me in touch with you who thought that you could help me. So what do they say? The best time to buy was 10 years ago. So if you're in a position to buy and you think that the property is the way to create, you know, financial freedom or, you know, maybe it's just a little bit of extra money in the pocket. I don't know what people's goals are, but whatever they are, if you think, property is the way forward then you know you've got people like yourself live who can really just hold their hand through what can be a pretty um, overwhelming process mm. but you know with having yourself in the corner and in sorry in that person's corner and the team it's it takes away all that well for me it did and I could imagine it would be quite similar to other people in my shoes it just takes away that stress and I don't know, like just feeling like you're out of your depth. Yeah. I didn't, and I didn't feel like feel? I was out of, my depth as, out of my depth as much because I had yourself and the team to continually fall back on for things I wasn't sure about. Amazing. So you felt, yeah, you sounds like you felt confident, um, certain, safe enough that you were making the right decisions and the right moves. Yeah, yeah. You guys gave me that confidence. Yourself and the team just gave me Yep. The, the peace of mind that what I was doing was going to get me to where I wanted to go, which, you know, we're still a ways off, but we're, we're moving forward. I mean, I'm not, probably not just moving, we're chuffing along forward. We're 
You are very much. <laughs> but look at you go. you, you've got you've built your dream. You got your van. You are able to still. This is one of the things that I love to teach people: is how can we get the highest ROI on life? So how can we still build wealth in the background? with ease enough that it doesn't impact your lifestyle too much and look at you go you're you're the perfect proof in the pudding right you and your missus now you built your caravan that you've been building for what how long has it taken you to build this caravan that you've been building out oh uh, by the time we actually purchased it and then had it all converted um yeah. probably about uh, close to 18 months by the time we'll actually be on the road yeah and you're on the road as of what a week or two away how yeah cool. probably about two weeks amazing story so you're gonna be traveling around australia in your van the dream you've always had you've got wealth you'll have had four properties by the end of this year you're early 30s is that right yeah i'm 31 you're 31 you're an absolute baby by the time you're 40 life will be set up for the rest of your life like for most people it's somewhere between property number five to property number 10 that's all they really need and you are you are well beyond on the way to having everything and your and that goals i mean you've had your portfolio planner done too um, well, and that was, I think, going ahead with property number four, I said to the team that my biggest thing that I didn't want was for going ahead with property number four to impact what I can do during this trip that we're about to commence. So the lifestyle that my partner and I currently lead is, you know, we're comfortable, we still invest, we still save, we can still do all the things that we want to do. And I just, that was the one thing that I needed Um certainty with moving forward is like okay well if i'm going to have to put money forward what is it going to be and is it going to impact with the trip that we're about to um you know embark on so again that's just that peace of mind you've got the team there they crunched the numbers they came back to me they said all right sam this is what it's currently looking like if you go ahead with number four now and again just gave me that peace of mind to be like yeah all right well let's do it i can afford that and still managing to live out of a van travel around australia do a bit of work, invest in the background and let it just do its thing. Yes, I love that. And that's the other thing a lot of people come to me because they think that like, you know, oh, I'm going to have to put up like an extra $20,000 a year for a property. It's like, no, actually there are properties out there that are neutrally or positively geared. And mm-hmm. yes, there are. Sometimes there are properties that are going to perform better and p- potentially get a better, uh, be more optimal in terms of getting capital growth. But also there are other properties out there that uh, can might not perform as best, but will enable you to sleep better at night or yeah. not, you know, bring down your lifestyle. And that's what it's about. It's about building wealth with ease because you, you could go very, very aggressive, not go and travel, sell with the caravan and be frugalish as hell. And, you know, and put everything into investing. It's about getting that ROI on life and being able to live whilst invest at the same time. And I think you're a perfect example of that, Sam. Like you're so proud yeah. of watching you. And that's what we want to, thank you. I appreciate that. It's, um, you know, there's been some long hours at work and long stints at work, but, um, you know, you grind now and also with the van, you've got that balance. We've got that balance as well in that we're going to be able to travel, but with the position that we're currently in can also invest and, you know, there might be some stints here and there where you might have to do some overtime at work or whatever it may be. But it's, yeah, like you mentioned before, it's just about that balance. Yeah. Still want to live your life before kids and all that kind of stuff, but also want to set ourselves up for the future. Mm. And that you're doing such an incredible job. All right, buddy. Thank you so much for that. We'll wrap that up. Appreciate your time. I think that was very valuable. Um, And yeah, congratulations again. So proud of you. Let's get number four. Keen as, let's go. Thank you for having me. Oh.